Welcome to the Kayla Ambrose Show. I'm your host and your travel guide to the other side, Kayla Ambrose. And I'm inviting you to come back for another episode here as we explore your spirit. On today's show, I want to talk about dreams. How to remember your dreams, how to interpret your dreams, how to have lucid dreams, and how to daydream as well. It's part of a series of books I wrote for Llewellyn, and the title of my book is The Awakened Dreamer. So you may want to check that out. It's available everywhere good books are sold. So I've remembered my dreams since, since childhood, and I used to keep a dream journal for years where I would write down every dream because I would remember at least three dreams every night. Now I keep a journal, but only of dreams that are so specific, so detailed, that I can't um, immediately interpret them. But most dreams now I wake up and I interpret them pretty easily. Over the years, I've categorized dreams into four different categories. One I call daily life. These are dreams about things on my mind. They're usually in my subconscious. They're things I'm working through in my daily life. And we all have this type of dream. It helps us work through problems and experiences that we're having trouble dealing with on a daily basis. Maybe we don't know the answer yet. Maybe it's causing us to have a lot of emotional turmoil and upset. So dreaming about these situations is kind of a safe place for our subconscious to run through the experience, to process it, and to give us more time to work through these situations. The second type of dreams I have are prophetic dreams. And these are dreams as a psychic that I dream about people, places, and events to come. And it's pretty noticeable that they're prophetic. Usually they don't have to do with me. I very rarely get help for myself psychically. And I don't receive as much for people that I'm very close to either. It's almost like there's a protective shield in place for people that I'm very strongly connected to emotionally that I don't get as much for them. But I have a lot of prophetic dreams and I do mark them down. And then I have what I call teaching dreams. And this is my higher self. This is when I go over to the other side and I'm connected with my higher self. And it is teaching me what I need to know about what I'm going through here in this lifetime. So I may be in the Akashic Records and over in the higher aspects of myself, getting information and wisdom to help me continue on what I'm working on. The fourth type of dream, as I call it, is a visitation dream. And that is when loved ones that are have crossed over, that are on the other side, come and visit me in my dreams. Uh, sometimes guides visit this way as well. And it's an easy way for your loved ones and your spirit guides to make contact with you because you're more open in your dream state and you won't question it as much as if you were awake and you feel the presence of, say, a loved one in spirit. You may or may not believe it's true, but when it's in a dream, you kind of go with it. So it's an easy way for them to first introduce themselves to you on that side and get you used to the idea that they want to communicate with you. The biggest complaint I hear from people is they dream at night, but then they don't remember. And so I list a lot of techniques how to get better sleep and how to remember your dreams in my book. And I'll share one of those with you now, which is you go to sleep with the intention. You tell your conscious mind you want to remember your dream and you prepare for it. So you might keep a notebook and a a pen next to your bed, or you might have your phone there where you could record it. And many times when you have a dream, you'll wake up, sometimes in the middle of it, sometimes right at the end. And what you want to do is wake yourself up enough that you'll write it down or record it, and write down or record every detail you can imagine, every thing that comes to your memory as you're telling it. Were you in a yellow outfit? Was the weather sunny or rainy or cloudy or murky? How many people were there? What did they look like? What did they feel like? 
How did the dream feel in general? Did it seem happy? Scary? Sad? Write down all the emotional things you felt about the dream. If you saw an animal there, was the animal healthy? Was the animal happy? Was the animal threatening towards you? How did everything show itself to you? If you were in a home or in a forest or in water, again, how did it feel? How was um, your situation? Your emotions behind this are going to be the biggest thing to help you understand and interpret the dream. So write it all down, record it all down. You'll find the more that you set this intention, the easier it will be to remember your dreams. So set the intention that when I have a dream, I will wake up and I will remember the dream so that I can write it down or record it. And then throughout the night as you have a dream, wake up and do just that. The more you do this, the more you will train your mind to wake up after every dream and allow you to record it. Now, here's a helpful tip if you're looking for inspiration and you're looking for an answer. You can ask your dreams specifically to provide you an answer. And what you want to do with that, with that is to take a nap instead. So what you would do is sit in a chair that you could be comfortable enough to fall asleep. You're going to train your mind and tell your conscious mind that you're going to take a nap. And while you take a nap, you want your higher consciousness mind and your subconscious mind to work together and to solve a problem. And so you think about that problem in your mind and you say, I need an answer, a solution to this problem. And then you set your phone to 15 to 20 minutes maximum and set the timer on your phone and then go to sleep. And with that 20 minutes, it's up, the phone will ring and it'll wake you back up. And that's about as long as you want a nap to get an answer. You don't want a full-fledged hour-long nap. You want just enough for your subconscious mind to work with your higher consciousness mind and see if it can focus on the question. The more you do this, the better trained your mind will be and the more it will start to work. There's something about turning your mind off from racing over the things it does. And especially when we're trying to problem solve, we often get more stressed. We're trying to figure out the problem. And so that tenses us up because it's a problem. And we get more stressed because we feel like, I don't know the answer. What am I going to do? I have to figure, have this figured out by next week. I don't know what the right answer is. And so we put ourselves in a spiral that feels more isolated, more fearful, more unsure. So if we step out of that and go into dream time and just nap on it, we can get a clearer answer that is more concise and gives us the answer for the direction that we need to go. A lot of people come to me and want a quick dream interpretation. They don't want to give me many details. They'll write me an email, send me brief information and say, I had a dream. I slipped and fell. I saw a deer. What does that mean? And so if I'm speaking to them or emailing them, I'll, I'll reply back. I need a lot more detail to sufficiently interpret your dream. I need to know where you were in the dream, what that place means to you, how you were feeling, how everyone else seemed to be feeling around you. Was it a fast paced dream or slow? What were the animals like that were around you? What was the forest like? What were you doing there? Was it day or night? What type of emotions were you feeling? Everything is a clue in dream interpretation. Once you become aware of your emotions and then how actively you were participating in the dream, the next step is to determine the subliminal messages that were in the dream and what those are trying to say. And then you determine who the true subject was in the dream. Were you the main star of the dream or was it the animal or a situation? If it's a recurring dream, that also puts it in a different category. How frequently do you have the same dream over and over? 
So there's so much more to dream interpretation that while you, it's helpful, I guess, to go online where those little dictionaries are, dream dictionaries, and it says, oh, if you dream of an apple, it means this. That's kind of a generic, maybe helpful, but it really depends on what was going on with that apple. Were you eating an apple? Were you catching an apple? Were you watching an apple grow on a tree? Was the apple on the ground? Was something else eating the apple? Was there a worm in the apple? Were the apples ripe? Was it a bad apple? Was the apple being used uh, to prepare something in the kitchen? Every little part means something different. So you really can't interpret your dreams just by a dictionary example. It can give you a little clue, but it should be the beginning of the interpretation, not the end. And so the best way you can do this for yourself is to write down every detail and then go over it later that day and really look at all the hints and clues that the dream is trying to tell you by the emotions, by the weather in the dream, by the people in the dream, by the way the people were acting, how everyone was acting really. It takes a lot to really interpret those dreams. You may also notice symbols in dreams. And if you have symbols that show up more than once, be sure to write those down and pay attention. That's usually coming from your higher self, could be coming from the Akashic Records, where they're communicating with you with these symbols. Symbols can hold a lot of energy, and it can be a clue of what's being downloaded, what's being sent from the higher realms into your org body and downloaded into you with energy and a message inside of it. So be sure to watch for symbols. Now with prophetic dreams, there are some that come to warn and to tell you something coming quickly. You might just have the one dream and usually it's pretty detailed of something that's coming. You'll see the person, maybe what's happening to them, when and where you get examples like that. And usually they tend to be more of a protection to stop someone before they get hurt. To tell them not to get in a car tomorrow, that there's going to be a problem. Don't get on that plane, something like that. Sometimes they're positive too. Sometimes people will have a dream about winning the lottery or uh, a big promotion at work. So it's usually some big thing that's happening for it to be a prophetic dream. Recurring dreams are interesting because they take a lot longer to happen and it keeps repeating itself. So it could be a warning of something big coming in the future and it will repeat itself until you get the message right. Or it could be indicative of a lesson that you're trying to learn and you just haven't quite figured it out. So it keeps recurring, trying to help you see what's really going on there. Recurring dreams themselves are often warnings. So pay attention to them as quickly as you can to try to figure out what they're trying to protect you from. In teaching dreams, it's a wonderful opportunity to learn uh, and download information from your higher self and to communicate with your spirit guides. It's helpful to create space in your dreams where your spirit guide or your higher self can actually come and visit with you. So what you would want to do is whenever you feel like doing visualization or meditation, you might create a sacred space that's comfortable for you, whether it's sitting on the beach, sitting on a mountaintop, sitting in a sanctuary, whatever place you feel safe and comfortable. And you would create space there for your guide or someone else to come and to be with you in this space. Maybe you provide another chair or a bench or something for them to sit on and be comfortable. And you build this creative space, how it feels, where only good can come to you there, highest and best, put the white light around it, very protective. And then when you want to try to communicate with your guides or a loved one, you, as you go to bed that night, you visualize your sacred space. And as you visualize it, you then speak and send out an invitation to the person you're trying to reach and say, hello, so-and-so, 
hello, my spirit guide, or hello, my friend. I would like for you to come visit me tonight to help me with something that I'm working on or to teach me about this topic that I'm interested in. And so as you do that, you visualize the creative space and you make space for that person to come and to spend time with you there. This can be very helpful. And once you start creating that, it begins to construct and make this representation of this place over in the astral planes. So after a while of doing this practice, all you have to do is think about it and it manifests and appears on the other side. So you've created this sacred space for you over there that you can easily step into and visit with your guides and others. And it's a wonderful way to do this and to really uh, safely spend time and get information as needed. The fourth type of dream, the visitation dreams, are the ones that I think are the most special. And people ask me often, how do you tell between someone in spirit really visiting you and just having a, a hopeful dream, a wishful dream that that person was communicating with you? And the thing is, you have both. Um, sometimes you're in grief and you miss the person and you dream about them. And you dream about your loss, your pain, your grief, and you see them. And that's just, that's just your dream. But there are other times where your loved ones come through the veil and visit you here. And here's some clues that they've actually visited for, versus just your mind visualizing them. The first one is when you wake up from the dream, you've been given some type of information that you had no other way of knowing. Maybe they told you how to find something you were looking for, or they gave you information about something that you didn't even know existed, and you now have this information. Maybe they give you prophetic information telling you about something that's going to come true in the future, and it does. When you awake from the dream, you can still feel their energy, and sometimes there's even a scent associated with it when they appear, a scent that you associate with them. And you may also have goosebumps or other physical sensations that show that your loved one is in spirit. You may feel the warmth around you, like they were holding you. You may even still see traces of the white light from them being there and holding you. If it's something that's not a loved one, some things we associate with having bad dreams or something negative in the room, you'll feel the opposite. It's very cold. You'll feel chilled, uh, a sense of dread. That's, you know, that's not your loved one. That's when you need to put the white light around you and say whatever's here cannot stay, cannot dwell, get out of here right now. And you always want to do that if it feels cold or forbidding in any way. When your loved ones come to visit, it will always feel very warm and soft and loving. And you'll be happy to have them there. Some things to remember when you ask your loved ones to come visit in spirit is there are rules on the other side. And the first one is they may look different when you see them. As we go back to spirit world, we revert and age back to a time that most people describe around being around the age of 35. And so your loved one may look younger, more energetic, more restored. Second, just because you do all this and you ask them to come and you're like, hey, please come tonight. I've got this problem. Doesn't mean that they can always come. They have work to do with the other side, things they're involved in, and they can't always come at the moment that you wish. But don't give up, keep asking, and eventually they'll get there. Also, depending on where they are on the other side and how much work they've done on healing themselves and where they are in their evolution as a soul can affect the answers they can give you. They may not have much more information than they did when they were on Earth. They may not have progressed to a point on the other side where they know the big answers yet. They may also, depending on their karma and experience, be in the process of 
readily and quickly reincarnating again and come back to learn those lessons. So they may only be around for a short period of time where you can really reach them. Don't be discouraged if you ask and your loved one does it appear. Sometimes when they first cross over, they have to go to what we call the healing temples where they need to heal from maybe if they had a long illness or they had a lot of things that they dealt with over here that were stressful. They go to those temples and while they're there, they don't come back to visit because they have to spend all their time focusing on healing their soul. And then depending on where they were in their evolution, they might have to go over to other departments, let's call them, to get things straightened out. And they may be preparing to reincarnate quickly as well. So there could be quite a few reasons that they don't appear. And even if they do appear once, they may not be able to appear as often as, as they would like because of things they're doing on the other side. So it's important to remember that. And if you're not getting a visit from the person that you want, then be open to asking for a visit from anyone in your family that would be for your highest and best. They may be able to provide information about your loved one that you're looking for in that way, as well as asking your guides. One of my favorite parts of dream work is lucid dreaming. And most spiritual wisdom teachers are taught how to lucid dream. And I think it's very important. When you lucid dream, you are somewhat conscious in your dream state. You're aware of the dreams that are happening and you can wake up from a dream if you like. You can stop the dream and can freeze it so that you can walk around and look at it and what's happening. You can remove things from the dream, not just stop the dream and remove it, but remove certain parts of it. I don't want this scary person there anymore. They're gone. I don't like that we're meeting in the dark in this alley. We're going to move over here to this restaurant and talk about it. You can rearrange your entire dream. You can not like the outcome and say, no, we're moving this dream right now to have a better outcome and pick the outcome and design it and make it happen. Lucid dreaming is having control of your dreams. And it's fascinating when you learn to do this, what you can learn and what you can change. So everyone should try to learn a little bit about it. Lucid dreaming can help you face your fears and do so in a empowering way. So you can ask to have a dream about something that you're working on or are working through that you're afraid of. Have the dream, but if it gets to be too much because you're a lucid dreamer, you can stop it, reset it, uh, close down dreaming if you'd like, if it's proven to be too much for you that night. You can also freeze it where you think again and again, how would you handle this differently? And you could run through different scenarios to see if that makes you feel any better. As you continue practicing lucid dreaming, you can incorporate it with your spiritual connection. Let's say there's someone that you wish that you could have said things to, and for whatever reason you can't. Maybe they've already passed over to the other side, or they're just not available to speak to you anymore in this lifetime. With lucid dreaming, you can create this scenario and speak to them while imagining that you're speaking to their higher self. And so you design a location where the two of you meet and your higher self gets to speak to theirs and to say what you've always wanted to say. Depending on how intuitive this other person is, they may receive this message in a dream of their own, which may help them to let go of this experience as well. But either way, it will go through to your higher self and to their higher self Well, they will receive it sooner or later. This is one of the beautiful ways that we can lucid dream to help ourselves and others. Another form of dreaming is <laughs> sleepwalking and sleep talking. And I have done both in my lifetime. I was a sleepwalker for a while and definitely a sleep talker. Interesting though, I wouldn't talk about private things about myself. I would answer complex questions. I've done this several times for people that were analyzing data, uh, sometimes engineering type data and other formulas. And it's happened several times where they've been on the phone and I was asleep and I was computating this data 
faster than they or their computer could do it and giving them the answers. And it's been documented twice. Pretty funny. I have no idea I'm doing it. And I find that ext extremely interesting. So I don't do it very often, but when I do, it seems to be solving problems like that. Again, going back to what I was showing when you take that quick little nap, you can use other parts of your mind, other parts of your brain that I don't think we're using uh, on a daily basis. But if you program your mind to start solving problems like that and doing the programming, daydreaming or napping, these answers can come to you as they did for me. These were very high um, engineering type answers I was providing, which is not my forte. So it's amazing. We still haven't explored how much we can do with the power of our brain and while in that dream state. There's so much more study that needs to go there. Now, I do really talk about daydreams and love to discuss this because you can take your daydreaming to the next level. One of the ways you could do this is to speak to a genius. In your daydream, you visualize you're in the chair, you get really comfortable, and now you imagine that you're going to go visit someone who you really respect. Maybe it's a brilliant person from anywhere in the world, even on the other side. Maybe it's someone who always gives you good advice. Maybe it's someone who's the best in their field at what you're working on. So you visualize them and you bring them into the sacred space that you've created. And you tell them about your problem. And you say, what is the answer to this? And you begin to communicate with them telepathically. This can be done. You can imagine these people tap into their higher self and ask them for assistance with your problem. You can also make a plan, a business plan, a vision plan, a marketing plan, whatever you're trying to think about that you might want to do for a business or an idea you have. And you can begin to dream about the plan. You can read the plan, look at it right before you take a nap and ask, what am I missing here? What else do I need to see? What else is integral for this plan to really take off like it should? And then be open to seeing what that business looks like and what it looks like down the line in short bits. Is it taking off? Is it doing well? Is it going to make the goals that you had set for it? This is a good way to visualize by daydreaming and to go through each section to see if things are really working out like you hope. I've got some amazing dream journals, half that are about dreams I've had while sleeping that have informed me and uh, communicated with me and guided me to to do so many things that I've done. Even more exciting to me, though, are my journals about my daydreams because they're really a concentrated effort. They're where I really have a passion that I'm looking to create and achieve uh, and succeed at. And I use these daydreams to really hone in, to really see where I need to step up my game, what I need to do, where I need to give focus and attention so that the right outcome will manifest itself like I'm hoping. And these, when I go back and look, end up being amazing journals where I can write in with my career goals and say, okay, this is where, where I want to go in year three. This is what I hope to have done. So never underestimate the power of your dreams. They have so much to teach you, so much to tell you, and are always working with you to help you create everything that you desire. Well, once again, that's as much as I can say in half an hour here on the podcast about a topic. So hopefully this has given you some interesting little tidbits that you want about dreams. For more information, go to my website, exploreyourspirit.com. You can read about all of my books there. And this one, The Awakened Dreamer, which can be at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or any bookstore. And I'm wishing you very good dreams and the ability to check in with them, touch in with them, and make the ones that you want to come true.